Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Jimmy, and today we're going to be doing episode 6 review of Stein's Gate. So to start this video off, I just wanted to tell you all that uh, I'm, I don't know if I actually said this in the last video, but um, I'll say it now. So I'm not getting my video from YouTube, the uh, Funimation's YouTube page anymore, because they sort of ran out of the dubs. So I, I'm not getting it from there, which it's still, I'm pretty sure it's still their property. So. so the episode starts out with that one girl, which I still, I don't know anyone's names, but um, I'll, I'll have a picture up of her. And she's looking at this text message, which it's really hard to read them because I don't speak Japanese. So I don't really know what actually was being alluded to in that little place when she's looking at her phone. But afterwards, the, uh, sat the, the news reporters that are doing the satellite kind of thing, they come up to her and they ask her for an interview. And she doesn't want any part of it. After that, there's a scene with Hoeen, the part-time girl, and Daru. And so Hoeen says she can eat lunch with them whenever. And then there's a whole comedic part, which I'm not even going to go into because it's really not that important. Then after that, everyone seems to be trying to figure out a name for the... Phone wave, real name, TBA. So they finally come up with a name, and it's, it was pretty good. I think it was, um, D-Text or something like that. We shall call it... Kyoba's Nostalgia Drive! And why not call it Contrary Mail? I don't get it. Why are we arguing when it should clearly be the mail that leapt through time? Because we're not entering it into a film festival. Then I'll squish it, it's a time leaper. Except that now we don't know what's leaping, do we? Maybe we could work banana in there somewhere. Oh, can you imagine our logo? Good flux mail capacitor! Are we implying that it runs on plutonium now? Ooh, ooh, DeLorean mail! That doesn't make sense. Close enough. Though if we go with that, I'd suggest we shorten it to D-mail. Oh, that's a good one! Great, we can move on, finally. Anyway, they start doing some more experiments on the bananas and stuff. So one of the more funny parts about the episode is what, um, is what Christina sent Hoeen as a text message. Interesting. It's been split up. I'm not familiar with this vernacular. In America, it's a compliment. And the best part is, he doesn't even realize until much later. Probably some physical law. Wait, that would mean that my head is full of air. So after that, Hoeen and Daru go to the supermarket to go get some more test subjects in the form of bananas and weird candies and stuff. The most interesting part about this is, Hoeen actually, he, he's not coping well with the whole making of like jelly people and you see it that he has a flashback to it and he like he sees some gelatin on the counter and then he starts like having these flashes and he just it it kind of shows that maybe the um experiment they're actually taking a toll on him then they come out of the supermarket and they meet the girl that has the social issues again and daru finally meets her who's this bank worthy I mean, totally respectable young meat space angel with a knockout ass in front of me. How rude of me, Daru, meet Kiryu Moeka, aka Shining Finger. So when they get back to the lab, the part-time girl tells Hoeen that the experiments or whatever is so loud and noisy that, that uh, what, I forget what his name is, Muscle Arms, uh, he calls him or something like that. Anyway, he's like freaking out because the experiments are so crazy. And so he's just like... <laughs> Which just makes it that much funnier, because you know Hoeen and Christina are probably doing crazy experiments up there. So then Hoeen goes back upstairs and he sees Christina doing a whole bunch of experiments. And Christina actually found out a few things about the time machine, time machine, that are pretty, they're pretty useful. But the really crazy part is the next part. This isn't the cliffhanger at the end, but it probably could have been and it would have been fantastic, but it wasn't. So the scene I'm referring to is Hoween in a dream. And the dream was him falling into a black hole. So in order to explain this concept better, I have grabbed my glasses of Nerdicon here, and I'm gonna put them on. So in order to understand what's going on, you're gonna have to have a slight knowledge of black holes. Inside a black hole, 
the end part, the innermost layer of the black hole is called the event horizon. If my hand was a black hole, the center part of my hand would be the event horizon. In Hoeen's dream, he is being forced into the event horizon, much like the people that are going through time travel would have been. Not only does this show that Hoeen is having a really hard time coping with the jellification of people, but it also shows that Hoeen is putting himself in the place of those people. It ceases to exist. One second to you, for me, stretches out past the horizon line of what is real. You're saying that space is So away. what Hoeen is talking about and what Krista is narrating for him is that apparently, inside of a black hole, time and space switch places. Normally, space is everything around you and time is the thing that travels forward or backward or stationary but inside of a black hole apparently time is around you space is what's traveling to and fro all right i think that's enough of the uh glasses of nerdicon so so after all that happens uh, Hoeen wakes up and he gets text messages from the girl that apparently can't talk to people without texting. And I, although I can't read the text messages, apparently it said something about she was coming over to see the, um, new, the old computer or something like that. So they have this whole conversation about how and why she can't actually talk to the people. And then she starts looking over the computer and taking pictures of it. But then she wants to take it and bring it somewhere which Hoeen obviously rejects the idea. After that, just about every single character in his laboratory comes in and says something about time travel. Some serious tweakage is needed if we're gonna make sending mail to the past user friendly, am I right? Mind if I heat at my chicken tenders before you start your time travel experiment? I think I had an aha moment about the time machine last night. Then she finally knows, and I know I can't read the text message, but it's pretty obvious what the text message says. She's probably asking him, what's with the time travel? And after he says, Is it true? Very well. I suppose since the cat's out of the bag, <gasps> Kirio Moeka, Hoeen dubs her moment, I number, you five number 005. I think I skipped a part. So I think I actually skipped a part with the part-timer and Hoeen talking about the part-timer's past. It honestly wasn't even that much to talk about. All that she, all they really said he, Hoeen asked her what her past was like, and she just was like, there's nothing wrong with my past. I've never met Christina in my life. But I don't understand what that could possibly mean to you. Why are you giving her the evil eye? What happened in your past? <sighs> nothing happened in the past. Alright guys and girls, thanks for watching. Come back next time for episode 7, and uh, that's about it for, I, for this review. So, thanks for watching. Second time I said that. I do this every time. Hello there, my lovely lady. And just like that, a man's drop kicked back into the shady underworld of all night RPGs.